Hi y'all, welcome back to the channel. I want to show you what I've done in wiring up this battery combiner box with all of the different cables for the batteries and the different cables that go to these three inverters. Uh, all right, let's get this out of the way. These day inverters, you can no longer buy them in the US. Uh, Solark has put a, uh, they had an exclusive to, for selling them in the US and then later they demanded an exclusive on split phase inverters altogether. Before all that, I got these three and the three for my house. Uh, but if you're looking for this inverter and I like it, uh, or you're not gonna be able to find it, I don't believe, sorry. There are some competitors coming online trying to build a, a an inverter that can compete with the Solar. Uh, should be online soon, maybe online already. I, the best of luck to them. And then uh, let's get back into this. So I find it very important that we make proper connections if we want to um, eliminate the possibility of heat and the possibility of fire. So it's very important that we use a good cable lug connection. And the way I make these lugs is with a 16 ton hydraulic crimper. They're not too expensive. This unit is 60 bucks. This is actually the second one though, because the first one that I used and made a few hundred good crimps with it, it eventually wore out in here and what I discovered after it failed completely is that the threads for this unit were stripped down inside. And I don't believe that I can find a replacement for this. So I just ordered a new one from Amazon. It was $5 cheaper than the last time I bought it. I think the supply stream problems are getting solved. I don't know. But when you use these, these come with metric dies for metric wire sizes. And this is AWG wire sizing it. Um, American wire gauge. Now, when you're trying to find for the two op cable, you can use a 70 millimeter die, but it's not tight enough. And if you'll look, this came with the new unit. This is the one that I've been using with the old unit. If you can look, you'll see that this one is smaller. And the way I made it smaller so that it would work properly with the two watt wire is I ground these faces down so that it would tighten up tighter. And I did that and then cut the lug after crimping to ensure that, as you can see in uh, the other video I made about making good connections, you want a gas tight joint. So when you cut that, you want it to look like pure copper, like just a, a solid piece of copper. You don't want to see any wires when you get done because if you can see individual wires, then there's also gaps where air can go. And we're trying to eliminate oxidation in the joint so that it lasts forever. The other thing we have to do is we have to use this um, shrink wrap tubing with the adhesive to seal to the wire insulation and to seal to the lug so that that joint where the raw wire is exposed doesn't ever see air. Uh, this isn't for insulation, it's for oxidation. It's to prevent oxidation. So if you see these lugs that sometimes are sold with a little hole right here so you can inspect how far the wire is pushed up into them, don't buy those. You don't want the wire to be exposed to the air. How long will it take for that to be a problem? I don't know, maybe 20 or 30 years. It depends on your environment, but there's no need for it. Just make a connection that will last forever. All right, so that's, that's what I've done. And if you want to look into that further, uh, look at the video that I made, I don't know, nine, 10 months ago about making good connections. Also, all of these connections 
are put together with carbon conductive paste. It's MG Chemicals, MG847. And you can look that up online and read the specifications about it. I think that it's a great product for what we're doing here. All these connections are also torqued with Dad's old torque wrench. It says 20 foot-pounds right here on this uh, battery combiner box. So all of these have been torqued to 20 foot-pounds, and I want to get that correct. I want to get that the same on all of them because how tight you make this lug affects the resistance on that lug. And one other thing. Oh, I will say that on the one aught cable that I use for the batteries, the 50 millimeter seems to work just fine for those without modification. Um, but whatever size wire you're using, always test the joint and make sure, don't just pull on it, cut one with the grinder, cutting disc or whatever, cut one and make sure that you're making a gas tight joint, especially if you're gonna be doing a bunch of them, it's worth the effort to make one up cut it and make sure that you don't need to modify those dies. All right, uh, when I use the MG conductive paste on these breakers, I put it here and here. So when you take this nut off, this cylinder comes off and that connection I make, uh, I treat with that carbon conductive paste and every place the lugs go on. Also, this battery combiner box this this bus bar is rated for double for two terminals to be put on each one of these lugs uh, says right on the instructions uh, each of these breakers the three breakers for the three inverters are 250 amp and each of these battery breakers are 175 amp dc breakers this is a 175 amp Anderson connector that goes into the battery here and then I have other protections inside the battery uh, for uh, I have a class T fuse inside the battery to protect the circuit as well all right now wire length okay so this is controversial and I did a lot of research on this and what I found from Victron and from Sunsync, which they, they make this same inverter or, or contract with Day to make this same inverter. Um, and Keith Gyo, who runs that show for Sunsync, he makes, he's got a YouTube channel and he makes a lot of these, uh, uh, makes a lot of videos about his products. And so Keith and I also read Victron says the same thing. They want the battery cable lengths to be the same for all the batteries, not this battery's closer. So it gets a short wire and that battery's further away. So it gets a longer wire. If you do that, you will always be draining this battery first and charging this battery first and draining that one last and charging it last. You're gonna cycle the batteries differently. And so, it's a circuit length. And so, each one of these circuits has a negative wire that comes up to the negative bus bar, which then feeds into the inverters. The positive wire comes in to this breaker and then there's another wire that comes from the breaker and comes to the bus bar. And then there's a wire, a negative, I mean, a positive wire that runs to the inverters. So we want the battery circuit length to be the same for each of the batteries. In this case, I'm able to do it. The farthest battery dictates that. And I'm able to do that circuit with 174 inches total. So you have to add the negative wire to the positive wire that runs from the bus bar to the breaker and the positive wire that runs from the breaker to the battery. And that needs to add up to 174 inches. It can be, you can do it however you like. 
this is a shorter wire than this one, but the combined three wire length of that circuit is 174 inches. More importantly than that, the according to the manufacturers of these uh, inverters, is that the wires for the inverters need to be the same circuit length. So I've got one inverter that's over there that's further away than this one. This one's close. But this wire needs to come in and it has extra length on it so that the length of the wire for the, each inverter is the same. That way they will, um, they will be balanced in how they provide power to the overall circuit. Um, I believe that covers everything that I wanted to tell you all about. I, uh, I'll be making another video soon. Please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us. And I'll, uh, I'll be getting to 10,000 subscribers soon. You could be lucky 10,000. Jump in there. Um, no, don't wait till 990, No, go ahead, hit that button. All right, thank you very much for your time. I tried to talk as quick as I could, but if you think I talk slow, just hit the playback speed to 1.5. It'll make me sound younger and smarter. See y'all in the next video, folks. Bye-bye.